Hi, this is the Golden Salamander with a dreams tutorial on how to set up custom attack animations for your character. Thanks to Demon Dolphin who suggested this tutorial. And I'm using the standard small puppet here and I've made three attack animations. Okay, so basic punch, a kick, and this flying kick or fist of fury kind of animation. Now, there's nothing particularly brilliant about the animations themselves. I didn't spend a lot of, of time on them. But the reason for this tutorial is to show you a couple of common problems you might have and how to resolve them and how to get more control over your custom animations. We're gonna, we've got a test puppet over here which is to showcase the things that don't go quite right. And the most basic way to set up custom animation is to use a single keyframe, uh, which is up here somewhere. And you can actually make a lot of different changes with a single keyframe. And with this punch keyframe, you can see it's just one pose and you can if you, we have a, a closer look you can see that some parts have been animated rotated or moved and some parts have not if we go into play mode now and I press R1 something doesn't look quite right it's not working the way you'd expect and I'll show you why this is in just a minute. Now, let's look at using timelines. This is the, the same punch and in a, a timeline um, form. And if we just pin this to the screen, With the timeline, it's, um, it's a good way to give you more flexibility um, using multiple keyframes, which can really improve your custom animations. With the timeline, it's usually best to start with a blank keyframe and to finish with the same blank keyframe. So just make a copy of the first one and this will smooth things out better. With this punch animation, there's just two more keyframes in between. One is the punch itself. And before that, there's a, a bit of a wind up to the punch. If we scrub the timeline, it looks pretty good. Simple, but that's what we're aiming for. And then if we go into play mode, it just doesn't work the way you'd expect again. And the main reason for this is that we need to turn off procedural animations. This is the thing that's interfering with our punch and it makes it look pretty lame. So if we scope into the puppet and we look at the behavior settings of the puppet, we'll see down here is the procedural animation settings. And it's easy to miss these options because they're right down the bottom. But if we hover over this first one, procedural animation, you see that most commonly you'd, you'd turn this off when you've added your own animation or poses. So that's exactly what we want to do for custom animations. So let's see that in action. Let's turn off the test puppet and go back to our main puppet. And let's open up the kick, sorry, the punch animation. Now here I'm using the same, uh, same punch animation, same punch keyframes as before. But I also have this keyframe here 
that I've stretched out to cover the length of the time frame. And if we scope into the puppet, we can see that this keyframe is deactivating those procedural animations. I also have a switch here. This is optional, but what this does is disable the controls of the puppet. Um, so this is so that you don't restart the animation whenever you press the attack button. Let's have another look at the kick. Sorry, the punch. That's the kick. There's the punch. So that works the way we would expect. It's much better. The punch is tighter. It's faster. And it looks like it does when we're previewing the timeline. I've done the same thing with the other animations. The kick is quite simple. Uh, but the feet, the feet of Fury is a bit different. Let's go back into the test puppet. Turning off the main puppet. And look at the multi-kick or the feet of Fury. Now we want the character to move up and forward while it's performing this attack. And you might try, as I've done here, to keyframe all these uh, positional changes. So the first keyframe is a blank one. Then he's gearing up for the kick. He's kicking and he's in the air. And then he's moving position to the final position, which is quite a bit in front of his original position. Now with the simple kick, he's just moving up and coming straight down to the same spot. So if we animate the whole puppet, as in if we, trend, uh, if we move the puppet up and straight back down, things work okay. But things get a little more complicated if you want to, if you want the character's position at the end of the animation to be different to where it was at the start. Mm -hmm. And when I tried this on the test puppet, things did not go well. So the solution I used for the, the finished puppet was a force applier. Let's deactivate the test puppet, go back into the main puppet. And look at the Feet of Fury animation. So here, rather than try to animate the changes in position with the keyframes, everything's happening in the one spot. So he's not moving up, he's not jumping, he's not moving forward. Everything's happening just where he is. Uh, these are the same keyframes as I, I spoke of before. And this is the force applier down the bottom. And by placing the force applier directly on the timeline, we can apply the force exactly when we want the character to start moving. In this case, we only want him to jump at a certain point. When he's here, we don't want to apply the force. So this, uh, putting it on the timeline gives you that flexibility. And we also have control over the direction and strength of the force, which is using this gizmo here. If we take another look, and that's working quite nicely. If you have any questions about this tutorial or requests for more Dreams tutorials, 
feel free to leave a comment and I'll try to respond if it's not too advanced. Well, that's all for now. I hope you found this useful and see you next time.